Hi, welcome to Microbiology Mentor. In quick concept series, we are here to discuss yet another important topic, CSF culture. Pyogenic CSF culture is requested in cases of meningitis, which is the result of infection of meninges. Acute meningitis is a life-threatening condition, so identification of its etiological agent is important function of a diagnostic microbiology laboratory. CSF from a patient suspected of meningitis is an emergency specimen and requires immediate processing to determine its etiological agent. CFS, CSF is obtained by transcutaneous aspiration and therefore all organisms recovered from culture are potential pathogens and must be reported to physician immediately. The number of organisms in CSF can be as low as 10 raised to power 3 colony forming unit per ml and therefore the concentration of CSF for the cases of gram stain by centrifugation is important for rapid diagnosis. Let's see the common bacteriological agent causing acute meningitis by age. In neonatal age group, the common microbiological organism includes E. coli, group B streptococci, which is Streptococcus agalecti, Listeria monocytogens. Among age group of two months, the common organism organisms are Streptococcus agalecti, Listeria monocytogens, and E. coli. In 10 years of age, Haemophilus influenzae, Streptococcus pneumoniae, Neisseria meningitidis. For young adults, the common organism includes include Neisseria meningitidis. Among adults, again the causative organism common is Streptococcus pneumoniae and Neisseria meningitidis. And in elderly, the common organisms are Streptococcus pneumoniae gram-negative bacilli like E. coli and Listeria monocytogens. So CSF which is obtained by a lumbar puncture which is an invasive technique therefore every precaution must be taken to reduce the contamination of the skin. So the site must be disinfectant first with antiseptic solution and alcohol in a manner identical to the phlebotomy skin preparation of the blood culture. After that, a needle with a stylet is inserted at appropriate level like L3, L4, L4, L5 or L5, S1 interspace depending on the location of the spinal cord. When subacnoid space is re reached, the stylet is removed and the spinal fluid is allowed to drain by itself which will be appearing in the needle hub. The then slowly the CSF is drained into leak proof tubes. Preferably CSF should be collected in three different tubes because each tube requires different diagnosis and different laboratories like tube 1 should be sent for biochemical and serological investigation tube 2 should be sent for microbiological culture and tube 3 should be sent for hematological examination however csf apart from this lumbar puncture technique can also be collected from ventricular shunt like umaya reservoir fluid or ventricular shunt fluid. In this process also, the reservoir site is cleaned with antiseptic solution and alcohol prior to the removal of the fluid, which is done to prevent any introduction of infection in the, in the port. Then fluid is removed by reservoir unit and again placed in sterile tubes as discussed above. Then comes the transportation of the CSF to the laboratory. It is important to submit 
the sample to the microbiology laboratory as soon as possible and an alert to the laboratory regarding the transit of the specimen should be made. In certain cases, the specimen cannot be transported immediately. So in those cases, it should be taken care that in no case the specimen should be refrigerated because the potential pathogens of CSF can be killed by an introduction of low temperature. Therefore, it can be never refrigerated. However, if a transit is delayed, it can be held at room temperature. The specimen must be labeled with demographic and patient information like time, date, site of collection, like ventricular shunt or lumbar puncture. Every effort should be made to mention the diagnosis of the patient, of course the provisional to improve the processing of the specimen. Now regarding the rejection criteria of specimen, as we have discussed that CSF is a precious sample, precious in the sense that it is obtained through a invasive procedure. So every effort should be made to process it as far as possible. However, in certain situations like when the specimen is sent in a leaky container, it should be processed but an alert to the physician should be made with a possibility of contamination. In certain situations like in insufficient volume, the physician should be called to prioritize the request. Now regarding the processing of the specimen, the inoculation of the media. So from the CSF tube, aspirate the fluid from the bottom of collecting tube using a sterile pipette because the probability of finding the microorganism will be maximum because the microorganisms are bound to settle. From that aspirated fluid, take two to three drops on each blood agar plate and chocolate agar plate. It should be streaked in quadrants using separate loop or flame loop for streaking each plate. If the volume of CSF provided is more than 1 ml, it should be inoculated in to a broth just like a blood culture. When the quantity is not sufficient for concentration, then a smear by placing one to two drops of CSF on slide should be made for performing a before performing a gram stain. Then the drop is allowed to form a large drop, which can be made without spreading the fluid, which this is also called as heaped up smear technique. After making a heaped up smear, the slide is allowed to air dry, which is then fixed with methanol and it is gram stained and interpreted accordingly. So regarding the interpretation of gram stain, any bacteria if seen are considered significant and if there are low numbers seen in only one or two fluid fields, sorry, then it should be confirmed with a second smear. And if found positive, a physician, the physician should be immediately notified. If sufficient specimen is left, then refer to the blood culture workup of broth for additional tests that can be performed on direct smear. The inoculated plate should be incubated at 35 to 37 degrees centigrade in 5% CO2, whereas the broth should be incubated 
at 35 to 37 degree centigrade in an ambient air. Regarding the examination, examine all culture plate and broth media for any microscopic or macroscopic evidence of growth at 24 hours. If however no visible growth is observed, then the plate should be re-incubated and it should be read aerobically for 4 days. If gram stain is positive and there is no growth on plate, the plate should be held for at least one week. At the same time, broths should be examined daily for four days and it should be held for at least seven days before discarding because the organism are slow growing and it may take days before it is reached to a detectable limit. Now regarding the limitations of the CSF culture, in certain situation false positive results may be there which results from contamination of the specimen or from the skin microbiota. So every care must be taken for, uh, for, uh, from the microbiology laboratory point of view to minimize these false positive results. In certain situation false negative results are also occurring like in case of when the organism are low in number or in cases of prior antimicrobial exposure or when the organism is fastidious. There, then in these cases the interpretation of the result should be made accordingly. With this I come to an end. Thank you.